Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. So, welcome back to... Sekiro, the ultimate guide, and today it is the big bad episode because we are doing it's today's the day we grow up, son. <laughs> yeah. This is actually a point in the game where you grow up if you watch the cutscenes because um, in the tutorial when he draws a sword, it fumbles. Like, oh, his sure. hand fumbles. And in this one, he draws it a little bit more, like... Readily. Yeah. And then in the last fight... So, when we're up against this guy, we want to equip those, uh, the long spark because it is definitely better. The axe is like vaguely okay against Genichiro, but honestly, and I don't want to tell you this, but actually you have to just get good at Genichiro. You can't cheese him. There, there like is cheese I'm methods. so happy. Yeah, but at this point we have prepared you as best as we possibly can. You have eight heals as opposed to like maybe three or four, whatever you'd have if you were fighting him as soon as you get to him. Now, with Genichiro, you want to be mega aggressive with him, but that also comes with the caveat of like, So you can hit him a few times and then you need to like, obviously block, essentially. You'll kind of see what I mean. So just there, right? It's so hard to explain because the, the actual, the fight itself is going so fast. But if you can back him into a corner like this, this is very, very good. You can do, do a few hits in at him, then you can like launch a firecracker, get in another few hits. You basically want to R1, R1, deflect, R1. Don't worry, because I also put in more footage at the end, uh, fighting them just to show you like a, another less perfect go at him. Now, if you if you start to heal, you want to be quite far away from him, because every time you heal, he'll, he'll pull out his bow. So if you're far away, it means you've got like, there's more travel time for the arrow, it means you can get out of the way easier. That flurry right there is perfect for when you have him below half health, because it just stacks his posture. Absolutely. Absolutely. So good. But, again, because you actually have to fight the boss, I can chime in and say, just get little hits in here and there, and once his health is below about... Once his health's down to about 60%, you can start really just relying on deflecting him only and making sure his posture doesn't reset. So, you want to, like, hit him in... So, if you look at the times when we're hitting him, that's the kind of parts you want to be looking out for. You want to wait for his, like, slightly longer animations, and then you can, like, get him in that. This is why the spark is so good against Genichiro, because ultimately, what you want to do is be able to get him at least close to half HP before uh, his posture will eventually just stack up without going down. So you can get in free hits by, like, taking spark. advantage of longer animations, etc. So now, we are moving on to his final phase. I can't believe there's a third phase, right? And this one, if you need to heal, heal up, but you move backwards and then he'll do that every time you heal, he'll just do the stab. That and then you can use the Makiri counter. That's actually quite easy to do. But now, you want to stay on his ass and hopefully you have enough um, axe because the axe will like straight up be able to just flurry him to death. Um, so two lightning reversal for those of you interested. You need to jump while you get hit by lightning and then still just give it like a half second before you mash R1. Just jump. Let the lightning hit you, and as soon as you start to descend, hit R1, you'll deflect the lightning back at him, it'll stun him, and then you get, like, a brief window where you can do loads of damage. 
Or you can just bait Makira counter attacks and full like full deflect his flurry combo and that's you. Uh, so this is another thing as well is you kind of want to fight him if you're doing our method or at least my method rather of using the axe you want to be able to fight him with, and then have at least an amount of emblems to take advantage of the axe by the end of the fight so that's just something to bear in mind so you want to be a little bit conservative with your emblems but again you just straight up have to get good at Genichiro that is that is the thing you just have to grind your head at him because with me, I've tried all the cheese methods. Those ones where you like try and lock them in a corner and shit, and it's like, yeah, it might work like one in every five times due to RNG, but it's just not worth it. And then there's all the ones where you like jump in his head over and over again, but actually it's harder to be able to do that 50 times in a row than it is to just get good at him. Because that's time spent that you could be getting good at him, not trying to do that. So now we're moving on to the, this is like a story cut off point. You have to do a whole bunch of shit just now and that way you can continue on to get the 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 choice of the three endings. So just do exactly what we're doing here, right? You talk to Kuro, and then you talk to the incense burner, and then you talk to Kuro. You smell. You talk to Kuro. Smell the incense burner. Smell Kuro. Talk to the incense burner. <laughs> then go smell Emma. She's the nicest one. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to Kuro, incense burner. Talk to her again. Then he slowly moves here. It's the best part of the speedrun. The <laughs> Kuro bracket. <laughs> Bang, six seconds. That was fast. <laughs> so you speak to him again, and now you need to go speak to Ishin, then you open this. Yeah, oh, if you if you have Saki, you can bring it to Ishin, and he can, uh, like, he gives you some more dialogue expositional shit. That is uh, something to mention, actually. There's three different types of Saki that you can bring him. monkey booze as well. There's yeah. various, uh, like, drinks that you can have. You can offer the drinks to NPCs. I guess this is something that I guess theoretically should have been said earlier, but this is it's just expositional. So you can offer them drinks, and they'll just give you various yeah. bits of dialogue and i don't think there's enough drinks overall to get all the dialogue there out of everybody there are not you must choose whose dialogue you wish to explore for some reason yeah pretty much unless there's a merchant that sells sake but i don't think you can buy sake because it's a key item i'm on a way you can probably like farm monkey booze off of like certain enemies or something no, like that i don't so. think they drop sake or booze i think they're key items i mean it is what it is it, again, it's one of those things that doesn't matter. It doesn't contribute to like uh, like getting any of the items. It doesn't contribute to the platinum. Nothing. So basically, keep your sake to yourself and tell them to fuck off if they want. <laughs> My rice wine. So after you've talked to Ishin, there'll be a note for some reason telling you that uh, Kuro, Kuro's here, even though you can see that he's there. I, I don't know why you need a note to tell you that. So then you just exhaust all of his dialogue here. You've you got the Sakura droplet, which you will have from defeating the butterfly. This gives you like an, an extra uh, res power, but for some reason it never actually seems to give you two reses, so I don't know what the deal is. You're on a cooldown when you revive, and that cooldown gets removed after you kill like a certain number of enemies or an enemy of a certain difficulty. Sure. sure. Then you, so you can get your second one, but there's usually idols in between that your second one almost never matters. Um, and with Jizo statues, I guess you could get three. So this shortcut here takes you to the temple, but the fact that you can teleport to the temple, it's like, it's so Irrelevant. useless. It also absolutely does not make sense that the um, that this place connects to the temple. It makes absolutely no sense. So now we're going to speak to Emma. Uh, there's like so much more, which is so irritating, but that happens after you fight your dad at the end of the game. Just now we... Get the item here, and then you can, like, eavesdrop. Oh, wait, so you eavesdrop later. Never mind. So I think now it is on to do the monkeys. Now, thank God for us, because... The monkeys is the worst boss of any game ever, unless you know exactly how to do it. But we do know exactly how to do it. So you just need to copy exactly what we are doing. So you go to Semper I don't Temple. care. It's still the worst boss. So I hate it. Before you inspect this element, take a Gatchin Sugar. It's one of those kind of bosses, right? So you inspect this, it teleports you to the boss arena. And essentially, it's you play this game of hide and seek with four monkeys. One's inexplicably invisible behind you. Yeah, great game design, thanks for that. But because you're invisible here, you can sneak up behind this one here. It's right at the start, you can just grab him and kill him. 
Now, if you were to do this any other way from exactly what we're doing here, you'll be running about for half an hour, try to fucking get them. It is the biggest, worstest pain in the ass ever. So just do it this way. You don't get anything from doing it any other way. And you can try it if you want. If you quit out, but you can only do this as many times as you have, you have gatching sugars. So anyway, you, f you have to follow exactly this like 90 degree angle, by the way. And uh, then we just come up here. He runs up this way. Thank God someone fucking fi figured this oh, he's out. He's the blind one, isn't he? Um, I don't know. I, get, I think he's wearing glasses, so maybe. Um, oh no, he's the one who can see really well, but then he jumps into the dark place because he's a fucking moron. So we take another gatch and sugar because we don't want it running out during the middle of the boss fight. There's only one more monkey to go anyway. Yeah. So we come this way, and you need to follow exactly what we're doing, by the way. Do not, like, change the way you move at all. And now you're behind this guy, he's not moved because you've been gatching sugar the whole time. You kill him, that's it. Boss done. Thank is later. Or thank is right now by liking the video. I still, it's still a terrible boss. I, I have the worst thing that's ever been made. It's so, I so hate bad. it so much. Now the cool thing about this is that you just got two attack upgrades right in a row. So that's quite nice. You'll feel a, an immediate improvement. And the uncool thing is that if you don't know how to do the boss, it, you, you're just going to be sitting there for half an hour. Yeah. Whether yeah. you like it or not, you're just going to be sitting there chasing these monkeys around until eventually it clicks. So the NPC here is the other divine child that isn't Kuro, apparently this one's like artificially made or something. Yeah, you Adam. artificially created a divine child. So you get a secret ending and what I would think would probably be the, the true ending from speaking to uh, uh, this kid I guess. She gives you the mortal blade, the mortal blade is sick and we're going to be using it a lot coming up because it's just Axe 2.0, kind of. Yeah, it is just a better Axe. So be, be sure to take the rice offer just now because it lets you save on one or two loading screens later on in the game. You can feed the child food in exchange for rice each time the game time advances, I think. Uh, so you can, it's actually just per load screen. So you can go oh. and eat the rice, go out load screen, come back. It's just basically- Oh she'll yeah, give you game like time a, advances in this on load screens, not on bosses. Something like that. Yeah, okay. So it mean and now we've got like a whole bunch of skill points. We're gonna start upgrading the Shinobi Karma. Again, you could have already started this, but it, it like you know, just do whatever you really want. But this is just kinda of like a every single a playthrough of Sekiro I've done, I never once touched the things that increases your emblems. Insanity. Why? I could just get good at the game. Or you could just use the axe more. But I didn't like the axe. It's oh. you who was like, it's broken, it's broken. So that's it for like this part. Or whatever. I'm just gonna. We're just gonna go over some more Genichiro footage, just so you can kind of zone in on what it is that we are doing specifically. Because honestly, it's kind of important. Left it to the end, just so you know, if you just want to like skip or whatever. But I, here we are. So he always comes in with the uh, bow and swipe. So this gives you like two good attack, good options to deflect. So if you are attacking him. He will deflect one of your attacks and he will then move his sword up to your left. And at that point, you want to start your deflections. You should see that at some point. Uh, so you saw him do the big, the, the long uh, turnaround wind up. That's a good time to hit him and getting free damage there. That Makiri counter didn't go off for some reason. I thought it would have. That looked like it should have went off. So right there, you saw him, he moved his sword up to your left, that's when you want to start deflecting, and that's normally after two hits. There, you saw it again, sword up to the left, when you see the sword go up to the left, you want to be starting deflecting. Right there, again, you saw it. I just got good at it, so that's the point where you don't want to follow up with an attack, because you will get hit after that. The flurries are a great time to uh, start deflecting as well, as you've said before. It's the best time to deflect, especially if his health is low, because it just gives you a full posture bar on him. Now, getting him into a corner is specifically very good, because if he opts to do that, you can hit him in the air. If he opts to pull out his bow in the corner, you hit him in the mid-air, and that's amazing. That's like the best thing that can happen. You can Makiri counter that kick, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you also Makiri counter when you can as well. It's hard to see when it's coming, but you can do it. Now, if he jump, he does the jump in the air attack and kind of slams down. You can uh, block that or deflect it if you want. But he'll then normally follow up with another unblockable attack. But it, for me, it's kind of hard to really work out if he's going to do the stab or the slash. So whenever he does the jump attack, I just hit him once and then back away. 
There, you saw the sword go up to the left again. You just want to start deflecting. So the difference is, is that he'll spin before he does the sweep, and on the stab, he'll have the emblem before he stab. He won't move after he does the So, I, I, you know, you can see it if your so reactions are fast enough. So, he takes a half turn when he's doing the sweep, in which case you want to jump. If the emblem comes up and he doesn't take a half turn, dodge forwards and you get the Makiri counter. See, that was a sweep because he done the half turn. Well, I mean, I, I know I can see the half turn, but see when you're in, like, for me anyway, when yeah, I'm in when the Yeah, when you're in there, it's tougher, I yeah, know what you mean. Yeah. But that seems to be the tell anyway that they've implemented so so he'd, he'd try and follow it sometimes he'll do like a, a little run up like there the run up is like you know that he's about to do this flurry so watch out for the run up and then you know that you can get like a good amount of like deflections in and then stage three hasn't changed at all just bait the leap use mckee counter and then axe and slam really for this uh this part you want to be as aggressive as possible uh, e even more so you do not want to give him a fucking inch now the thing is, is, I'm really bad at these lightning deflects, so it's like... I, I also, it was so lucky I managed to get the Makiri counter there. But the axe is absolutely your friend at this stage. You probably wanted to dodge that instead of taking the axe, but... Absolutely, yeah. So I actually yeah. managed to get you the got lightning it, counter there. And... As soon as you start to descend, so when you get hit by the lightning, you freeze in the air for like a frame. Maybe two frames. And then you start to descend. That's when you hit the R1. Yeah. You want to try and catch it on the way up, and then you can deflect it on the way down. So, this was me. I got like a little bit greedy, uh, and that was just one where I died. But ultimately, I think that was still a good example of a Genichiro fight. And then this is like another one where um, I won. But I just think that it's all relevant footage. So, you saw there, the the sword went up to the left. You that know was a you Makiri counter. Attack. Perfect. That was a perfect Makiri counter. Sword going up to the left. I'm going to point it out every single time when the sword goes up to the left. That is... It is... Because that bit was fucking me over so much. You've landed two Makiri counters in a row after that leap, so you must subconsciously know the tell. So, yeah, but it's just like sometimes I don't and I'm not like confident enough with it. That time you... Yeah, you, fucked up. Yeah, But I still went in for the Makiri counter. But again, there you go, there you go. Whirlwind yeah. Slash! Whirlwind wow, Whirlwind. another attack! Whirlwind Slash, like in the corner, like I said, when he's in the corner, he pulls out the bow, you've absolutely got the upper hand on him. Yeah. At this point, what Tony should be doing is strafing round to his right, yeah, absolutely, like yeah. this, and getting Ganich Road back in the corner. I, I completely agree. Obviously, again, yeah. it's, it's easy to say that when you're looking at it from an outside yeah. pers perspective, but it's, you know, it's just something to kind of bear in mind if you're able to, like... It was almost dead anyway, but it might have get... That's the kind of thing that would give you a better start for stage two, but it's just not, like... It's whatever. You beat him anyway, so... But, yeah, that, that's Genichiro. Get good at him, and then put him in a corner and beat him. And then wait for the owl to show up in the same place and then get absolutely fucking stomped on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the owl fight is uh, going to give you some headache, but I'm going to show you how it won't. But, aye, um, like, there there you go. Sword went up to the left again. Uh, you, I, you can block and deflect that jump attack, but I feel that whenever he does do this this kind of this slam jump attack, there's, it pulls up like a big sort of like dust cloud, and that's what kind of hampers my vision, because, I mean, I, I don't know if it's just like slow reaction times or shitty vision, but... I mean, because he's like kind of blends in with the floor colour a little bit, I suppose. Maybe you're just bad. Too much axe and slash and not enough blocky block. Now, when he pulls out the bow, that is, like, a fairly good time if you're able to, like, kind of strafe around him and hit him that way. Like, you know, that, that's, like, you're always looking for just the small... Because he takes a fair amount of damage every hit that you deal to him. That's something to bear in mind. Well, you could grab by him. Yeah, I, I didn't even know he could fucking do that until he died. Yeah. I just hope that, like, the information that we're trying to give here is helpful enough. I mean, I know it sounds really disheartening when it's, like, if you've tried this guy like a bunch of times and we go you just need to get good at him but hopefully this will be the information that you're looking for i also suggest that perhaps looking at other ganichiro guides but i never felt that they were especially useful the one thing you need to remember about ganichiro i guess is that his combos don't change it's only the final attack of his combo string that changes 
and that's usually just the unblockable or he'll back roll into the bow or something. But yeah. his melee combos are always the same. So if you figure out the tempo when you're in like face to face with him, like attack, attack, block, attack, block, block, attack. Yeah. That's always the same tempo. So if you just start to like remember his combos, build up your muscle memory for learning the uh like the I guess look at like musical beats, the one, two and three and four. Yeah, there is a, there's definitely a rhythm to it. That's the best way to look at Genichiro for stage one and two. God he was fucking me up in this stage. He got you a grab on that stage as well. Wow. So another thing bear in mind Genichiro's all hands, that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> the, I like the, him, but he's all hands. <laughs> <laughs> the best advice I got with found with Genichiro is when it comes to the third phase, you just want to be on his ass so so hard. Or you run away and bait the leap, and then Makiri counter every time. But, aye, and the, the axe really, really does play such a huge part. Genichiro, in way of Tomo, way of Nomo! <laughs> <laughs> so I really hope that this episode was as useful as I intended it to be. I know that there's just no quick fix to Genichiro, but basically the guide is all about getting you to a point where you're as prepared as you possibly can be for Genichiro. Genichiro. And I think we've done a good job of that. After Genichiro is a nice reprise as well. There's not a lot of yeah. difficult bosses for a while. Yeah, this is absolutely true. The, the, so, the next after this is a, a, a walk in the park up until maybe for another quarter or third of the there's, game. There's a reason why a lot of people view Genichiro as the first main wall of this game. And it's because he is. Yeah. <laughs> so... Like, by now, if you can beat Genichiro, you're at a point where the game is clicking with you enough that you could you can finish it. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you can beat Genichiro at this point, you can complete Sekiro. You don't have to worry about the game getting too difficult or anything like that. You've pretty much got all the fundamentals down, and that's what Genichiro is there for. That's why we're saying you just kind of have to get good at it, because you need to get good at the fundamentals of the game exactly. at this point. Exactly. So, However, the, the, the other good news as well is now that you've learned the fundamentals, you now don't need to apply it for another third of the game. <laughs> exactly, because you could just go back to the smash and grab of the axe in R1. <laughs> so great. But anyway, hopefully this was a helpful episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Catch you later, guys.